let's go. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you guys very much. You have done an excellent job, but you're all done. You guys are finished, done. I don't need you anymore. Thank you, checks in the mail, goodbye. Thank you, bye-bye. This is my new custom enclosure for my Creality Ender 3 V2. Before I jump into this video, I'd like to preface this with a caveat. If you're looking for enclosures for your 3D printer and you only make it this far in the video, heed this warning. Do not use this project. This is based on the BLV enclosure that's hosted on printables. There's several critical issues with this project that make it nearly unapproachable and cost prohibitively expensive. I'm gonna dive into these issues in more detail. So, let's go. My summer intern is tired of being left out, all exposed. This is definitely not good for company morale, so before the BBB gets the wrong idea about what's going on here, I thought I would get ahead of this potential PR nightmare and get some kind of case enclosure for my summer intern. For those uninitiated, the summer intern is my custom Creality Ender 3 V2. Now, truth be told, I've been looking for an enclosure for my Ender for a while now, but I really wasn't happy with any of the existing offerings. I'm not a fan of fabric enclosures because one, you can't see through them, and two, it's fabric. I thought about building another lac enclosure, but I didn't want to have to build another one from scratch or get involved into another extensive project. This is what we're gonna refer to as foreshadowing. But there really isn't anything online that fits my requirements, which is basically not fabric and would cost what I deem as an appropriate amount of money to spend for an accessory on a $200 3D printer. So here's what I want for this enclosure, AKA, what are my goals? One, this Ender 3 is basically my test bed for various projects and video ideas, so I want to have the ability to easily remove the printer from the enclosure. It's got to be fully enclosed in order to trap heat and particulate matter, looks halfway decent, and ideally isn't too expensive. So I picked this up. This is the BLV Enclosure Project, which I accidentally picked up because I bought the frame secondhand from a guy on Facebook Marketplace, not knowing they were part of a larger project. What comes in the box is basically the frame enclosure, and there's also plexiglass or acrylic panels you need to fabricate or source yourself, and a couple of 3D printed parts like door handles, but the way that I see it, this is a much better value in terms of time than a lac enclosure. Or so I thought. Now, unless my Mandarin is failing me, this propaganda paper is from 2021, which means this has been sitting around for quite a while. But it also means that apparently this is from the beta phase of the BLV enclosure project, where there were some documented issues with the quality of the tabs on the extrusion corners. They snap off under pressure, and I'm not sure if this was ever addressed in future versions, so I'll take extra care not to back over them with my truck during installation. And um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait, let me check the documents. So yes, it seems there's supposed to be eight, AKA eight corners on a cube, and I have nine. So to whomever ordered one of these and only received seven extrusion corners, I have your other one. Now, yes, I'm aware this enclosure was designed to fit the Prusa i3 Mark III or the Prusa Mini, and not a Creality Ender 3 V2. That's okay. I'm aware of this fact, and I have a Prusa Mark III, and they're roughly the same size. Comparable bed volume and gantry height. I'm planning on making some modifications to the enclosure to make this work. Now, I'm gonna make some modifications in order for it to fit an Ender 3 V2. The Ender 3 V2 is about as wide as the Prusa Mark III, but it's just a bit taller. So I'm gonna have to increase the height of the enclosure by about 50 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is print out these frame extensions and rework the design on the acrylic in order to fit the taller dimensions of the enclosure. Seems simple enough. I designed these custom frame extensions that allowed the enclosure to sit just tall enough for the Ender 3 to sit inside of. The two front extensions also include the bottom door hinges and the left one includes an external mount for the Ender 3 screen. I also included a through hole so I can thread the ribbon cable to the outside of the enclosure. This was designed with a little bit of topology optimization for the frame mount to reduce some of the amount of material used. And I think it looks pretty cool. All right, now moving on to the acrylic. And here's critical issue number one with this project. Getting the acrylic cut locally was a super time-consuming task and it ended up being incredibly expensive relative to the price I paid for the extrusions. Because the second you start cutting acrylic, it gets expensive 
real quick. I called nearly every plastic processor in my area and it just seems impossible to get a response on anything. Yellow? Hey, hi. I'm in need of a service to be performed. I was looking on your website and it clearly states that not only do you guys run a business that performs this service, you're actually regional leaders in performing this service. I would like to provide you a fair, market-based financial compensation in exchange for your services. But given how difficult it has been to even get someone on the phone, you can pretty much name your price and I would pay it. Hey pal, I don't know who you think you're talking to, but you can go f yourself. This is basically my experience with many of the local suppliers I reached out to. I was able to get quotes from three suppliers and two I had to throw out immediately because I couldn't even entertain the cost I was quoted. Finally, I was able to work with a great local supplier to have them cut the acrylic for a total price of $240, all six pieces. This didn't include shipping. I drove and picked them up myself. In order to produce the acrylic, the supplier wanted Imperial, AKA American units and engineering drawings exported as PDF. So I had to go back and recreate these for them. This entire process took nearly a month from first reach out to me walking in and picking up the cut acrylic. Just back and forth, clarifying the requirements and the lead time of actual production. Definitely not as simple as handing over a couple of DXF files and picking up the cut acrylic. While $240 is a large cost relative to the initial cost of the frame, truthfully, this is about in line with what I would have expected to pay for a custom job. Next, the electronics. We have the external fans, LEDs, and the Raspberry Pi that's gonna be running Octopi. For the fan, I'm using a modified version of the original fan box. This is basically just a fan and a piece of carbon filter that works to remove extruded plastic matter floating around your print chamber. I wired in this mechanical on-off switch because right now I have no idea how this is gonna impact my print quality, if at all, so I'm gonna play around with it, do a little bit of testing, and if it's something that I feel should be actually wired into the firmware of the printer, I'll make that change later on. I also made some modifications to the original box to easily remove the back panel in order to exchange out the filter when it's dirty. The original design would have required me to unscrew the entire box for the panel, which is far too much work. Now next, for the LEDs. All these peripherals are running on a 12 volt power supply I borrowed from my neighbor's network router. The LEDs are some WS2812s I had left over. They don't fit in the gaps in the extrusions. I even tried lubing them up with no dice. So I made these wire LED holders that slide into the extrusions and hold the LEDs in place. The LED strips are powered by five volt, and in case you were paying attention, five volt is not 12 volt. So I installed a buck converter to bring that 12 volt down to a usable five volt. The LEDs are also gonna be driven by the firmware of the printer instead of an external controller, which is gonna require some updates to the firmware, plus using the NeoPixel pinout on my motherboard. The LEDs also have to be spliced and re-soldered in order to properly contour to the shape of the enclosure. Now, I could have just used some static white lights, but come on, <laughs> let's be honest. I'm a zoomer. I need to have my attention span constantly cattle prodded back into focus or I'll accidentally end up doom scrolling mukbang videos. So for me, only flashing color lights will do. But before we continue, I'd like to shout out this video sponsor, PCBWay. I've personally used PCBWay to have batch runs of PCBs made for a previous project I was working on. But PCBWay doesn't just offer PCB prototyping. They also have a variety of other manufacturing services, including CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and of course, 3D printing. It's super easy to order. Simply upload your project files, choose your process and material, and get an instant quote. It really is that simple. So thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now back to the enclosure. And this was it. I was done with the final assembly. Everything was all together and I was ready to have the printer put inside. I brought it downstairs and as I placed it on the table, but then catastrophe. Hours upon hours of work, hundreds of dollars literally disintegrated between my fingers. I watched helplessly as the beautiful enclosure broke apart for seemingly no reason. The weight of the enclosure frame caused one metal tab to snap and gave way to a domino chain reaction effect. Nearly every single metal locking tab had snapped clean off. I watched helplessly as the frame folded in on itself and my creation was reduced to less than the sum of its parts in a flash. 
I stood there for a minute or two in complete disbelief, trying to process what had just happened. There was no way to salvage this, at least with the intended method of assembly. Shock turned to sadness, which flourished into an unbridled rage. The curtain of red and thoughts of retribution clouded my mind, heart racing and blood pumping. This transgression will not go unpunished! But some relatively shallow, internal reflection revealed the truth. I only had myself to blame. I bought the extrusions for $40 off Facebook Marketplace, and I knew about the tab issue ahead of time. By the time I got to this project, these issues were already well documented and I continued anyway. I could have just thrown away the extrusions and eaten the $40, but so is the hubris of man. I decided to continue on anyway, despite knowing just how bad it was going to be. But that's okay, because this project has instilled in me more determination and discipline than any David Goggins podcast clip would have. So thanks for that. But now I had to go back and basically JB weld the frame extrusions together, which opened up several more issues. With the original locking tabs, there was a good bit of play in the system, which made inserting the acrylic into the extensions easier. The locking tabs were subsequently tightened down, making the whole enclosure rigid, leaving basically no gaps. Now, because I had to JB weld it, the frames were asymmetrical, despite my best efforts. And now there's some gaps. I also had to sand down the areas with JB Weld, then I painted them to match the extrusions. I also had to 3D print some parts to fill in the newly created gaps. But now, time for some reflection. This project ended up taking significantly longer and was far more costly than I originally bargained for, which to be honest is par for the course with most DIY endeavors. But like getting back together with your emotionally unavailable ex, Somehow I always managed to convince myself that this time will be different. The BLV enclosure project, while having a pretty good overall design and some excellent redeeming qualities, has a critical flaw with the frame that renders it completely unusable. From what I can tell, there has been no new work on this project, and there doesn't seem to be any intention on the owner's part to fix this with an updated design. For all intents and purposes, this is effectively a dead project, and I would strongly advise looking elsewhere for an enclosure, despite the fact that the project is still listed on printables and the frame kits are still available for sale. Next, the acrylic. In my experience, getting the acrylic cut was expensive and time consuming. The original enclosure was designed in millimeters, which presented some challenges when my plastic supplier wanted all the drawings in inches, and I only had sheets of acrylic available in inches to choose from. This was far more expensive than I was hoping, and frankly a time sink. I guess it was just my area, but I also had a subpar experience with nearly every other plastic supplier that I contacted, other than the final one I ended up working with. But my supplier did a fantastic job on the pieces of acrylic, and I really have no complaints about their work. All in all, I think the final project turned out pretty good, and I'm mostly happy with the results. So, I hope you learned something, and as always, thanks for watching.